Um, just yesterday, to set a bit of context for the work we've been doing on uh, climate change and climate governance, the Hadley Centre released their latest model results. Um, and the um, bottom line here is that they're now suggesting that unless we make early, that is very soon, and very deep cuts in greenhouse gas emissions, global temperatures are going to increase by more than five degrees. Um, so if we look at business as usual, they're looking at a much warmer Earth, and what they're looking for is major action starting in 2010. And if we do that, then they are suggesting that we might stay under three degrees of warming. Now, I know there are several of the institutes that are focused on this question of greenhouse gas emissions and carbon. Um, and we, together with the Institute for Science and Civilization, are the two that are focusing a lot on policy, although, of course, the new transport center um, will be doing that as well. And what we focused on in the last three years very much was how can we actually achieve these cuts in greenhouse gas emissions and who is going to make them. The first piece of research I want to talk about, I'm not going to talk about everything, but it's an area where over the last three years we've built up what I think now is recognized as international expertise in this area, is the role of carbon offsets in the carbon market. And as I think most of you know, these are ways in which nations and companies can meet their emission reduction targets by buying reductions elsewhere. And there's an economic logic to it. Um, there's uh, sort of benefits in terms of sustainable development. And it's seen as an alternative to reducing your domestic or your personal emissions if that is too difficult. And over the uh, three years that we've been working on carbon offsets, the carbon offset market has just exploded. Um, it's uh, gone up uh, into the billions now. Um, both, um, and there are two major sorts of offsets that we've been looking at. The first is what we call the formal or compliance regime. And that's mainly through something called the clean development mechanism, where countries can meet their Kyoto commitments by buying carbon reduction, carbon credits from uh, carbon emission reduction projects in the developing world. And the second and smaller market is the voluntary carbon offset market, which is where you're offsetting your flights or not, depending on what you think about um, offsets. And there are very positive arguments for offsetting, that they're cheaper, they're faster, they are a way to get rapid and immediate cuts in emissions, and that they've got side benefits for sustainable development. But I think you're also aware that there's a lot of controversy, that some people think they're unethical, that they're not really making additional carbon reductions. Rather than go into the detailed science, I thought I would summarize some of the recommendations that have come out of our work on offsetting, and particularly on the reform of the clean development mechanism. Um, we don't all agree. We have quite differing uh, views between the various research fellows. So these come from um, different papers. But some of them I think we have consensus on. One of the things we've been working to do is to expand the range of technologies that can be used um, for offset projects, particularly expanding the use of wood stoves um, and funding for making them more efficient in the developing world. And we've done this because this is one of the ways for carbon finance to reach poorer regions such as Africa. We've written reports suggesting different weighting systems that would give more credit for sustainable development um, in offset projects, again, um, particularly uh, with a concern in Africa. We've been doing a lot of work on the question of certifying carbon offsets, particularly uh, in the voluntary market. Because of the problems around credibility, there are a lot of proposals now to have certified carbon or fair trade carbon, all sorts of certification schemes. And we've been uh, doing work both evaluating current schemes and uh, working with a variety of stakeholders to suggest which ones uh, might, in fact, be most implementable. Um, Emily Boyd, for example, has been working on what can we learn from previous interventions in development, like the Green Revolution, like um, uh, some of the other work uh, in agriculture. Can we learn from previous mistakes in development and apply those lessons to the carbon offset and carbon emission reduction projects? And then one of the new areas we've been looking at is how you can have a sort of win-win-win, where you could have a mitigation, a carbon reduction project, that also helps you with adaptation to risks of climate change and will also help with poverty alleviation. So we've got a set of projects in Central America right now looking at that issue. 
Um, there's some larger um, issues uh, beyond sustainable development, um, which are very important in terms of the offset market. And um, to bring that very close to home, there's a UK climate bill whereby um, the UK is committed or will be committed to a 60 to 80 percent reduction in emissions. That will partly be done through Malcolm's new car and the work that Dave and Malcolm are doing. But it's pretty clear that it's going to be quite hard for the UK to do that without buying carbon offsets. But they have not yet decided what percentage of the UK emission reductions will be able to be met through offset projects. And several of um, uh, my fellows have been, um, and myself, have been talking to the government about what they might do and the Climate Committee. Um, we're doing some work on expanding the CDM to focus on particular sectors, and that is particularly work that Jimin Zhao's been doing in China. Very exciting and very powerful possibilities for large-scale energy transitions in China. Um, we, and um, then um, one of the questions we've been talking about this week is whether the uh, recession and the financial crisis is actually going to mean that everybody makes their emissions domestically, in which case the offset market might collapse, and that might be a good thing, or it might be something that's going to be a problem in terms of the north-south bargain on development. Um, the final thing that we've been looking at is the question of carbon credits for avoided deforestation. At the moment, you can't get carbon credits for... Um, protecting your forests. You can only get them for growing a new forest. And this question of um, carbon credits for avoided deforestation is coming into the international climate regime in a big way. And that leads me, this is the list of our fellows that have been working on offsets, but that takes me right into, um, I will miss this one, sorry Max, this is another set of work that we've done on non-nation state actors, how um, uh, actors beyond governments um, can contribute to emission reductions and the questions that we're asking. But so that I don't run out of time on our new initiative, I want to talk about the Oxford Centre for Tropical Forests. And this um, will partly address this question of carbon credits for avoided deforestation, but it's going to address a much larger set of questions. Um, as I think most of you know, tropical forests are very critical to managing climate change, they're critical to biodiversity, and they're important to economies and livelihoods of many countries and many people around the world. And with funding um, for some posts and some visitors and some events from uh, the 21st Century School, um, we um, are going to establish the Oxford Centre for Tropical Forests with the participation of people across the university and beyond. We want to expand the expertise in tropical forest research on Oxford with a very um, strong sort of international mission to inform both both tropical forest science, but also policy and implementation with regard to tropical forests worldwide. Um, we're going to coordinate the center. Um, the um, co-director, and in fact, the main person next year will be Yadvinder Mali, who I think some of you know. He unfortunately couldn't be here today. And the 21st Century School is one of the partners in this, but it's playing a very critical role because the 21st Century School is funding us to add social science and economic expertise to what is a very, very strong natural science core of research already at Oxford. Uh, just to give you a sense of who the partners are, in addition to ECI, which will play the coordinating role, we've had very, very positive response from zoology and plant sciences. Um, we've um, been working with the Smith School, with geography, with international development and anthropology to establish the university-wide initiative. But we're trying to make this not just university. There are also a number of very, very key stakeholders who are based in Oxford in questions of tropical forests. So Eco Securities is the biggest carbon credit developer around forests in the world. Um, we have ProForest, which is one of the best consulting groups for the private sector. And then we're also working with a number of NGOs based in Oxford. Um, the key themes for the centre, I'll let you read those because um, you can do it faster than I can say them. But we're looking at a very wide range of issues around tropical forests, biodiversity, ecosystem services. Can quantifying the value of a tropical forest be a way to protect it by marketing the services provided by forests? Satellite monitoring is an important thing, and I, we just have very exciting news that it looks as though we're going to be asked to coordinate part of what's called the Global Thermometer for international, um, uh, a big international initiative. We're going to be looking at governance and policy, sustainable development, the economics of forests, and the relationship between forests and climate change. 
And what we're doing, uh, launch of the center will be uh, in a month. Uh, we're hiring two fellows. Uh, we're doing a lot of mapping of what's already going on. Um, we started this, what's already going on at Oxford. We're going to have events around tropical forest issues, sabbatical visitors. Uh, we've already established our steering committee. And we've got some ideas about how we'll link to the rest of you. Obviously, the forests are part of the carbon cycle, so we'll link to those. But there are also human dimensions of forests that we think link to a number of the other centers. Okay? Thanks. Thank you.